Welcome, I'm Meredith, and this is the Oasis Spiritual Empowerment Tarot, all about tarot, oracle, and empowering you. And today, I have some exciting mail. This is from a Kickstarter campaign, and I have been eagerly awaiting this. So... just gonna open the box off screen because packing label you know but this um now this is something that is from a creator that I've backed uh, before with playing cards. Oh man, look at this book. Okay. Let me just see. Ah. <laughs> that is just the best. Oh my god, I love that. It's a sticker. That is so fabulous. And we have a bookmark The Witch of Saratoga, Angeline Tupps. Um, let's just say, so those were stretch goal items. Um, so in October, he's launching, um, his next project, the Twice Told Tarot, originally called the Bloodstone Tarot, but the new name is a better fit. The deck is, um, the result of my collaboration with a local artist in Los Angeles who created truly stunning moving drawings. Then, in December, you can expect to find a new mass market edition of the popular Hieronymus Bosch tarot hitting the stores. This version has the feel of a Tashin art book with all the mystery of the tarot. The deck box even opens up like a real Bosch triptych painting. Um, yeah, so this is Travis McHenry is the creator and it's Bloodstone Studios. Um, I, ha I think it was uh, Angels and Demons playing cards, um, which actually, another cross room. Okay, but they're super awesome. If, if uh, you know, fabulous quality, look at the, this is a big honking book. So this, <laughs> in case, I'm sure it's gonna be on the title, but it's the Magicians, Martyrs, and Mad Men. So, um, and again, by Travis McHenry. Um, oh, wow. All right, so, let's look at the deck first. Um, but then maybe we'll take a little bit of a look at the book. Um, and I think, I think the book was extra. Like, I added on extra, but I honestly don't remember. Um, although this Kickstarter um, came pretty quickly so this is not one of the many that I've been waiting on for you know year two years um, so you know this he he fulfilled very quickly uh, as as he did with the other project as well and I'm sure probably all of them you know So the box, the box is nice. It does have the little thumb cuts. Um, 78 card tarot deck that celebrates macabre, magical, and miraculous personalities. Each card features original artwork of a magician, martyr, or mad person from the past who had a, con who had a connection with spirituality or occult practices. A cultist and art author Travis McHenry created this deck to reveal the deeper meaning of the tarot through the deeds and misdeeds of witches, murderers, saints, cannibals, and prophets. So, what, how perfect for this time of year, too. So, I'm super, super excited. Um, okay. if, if my nails were shorter, it would have been a little easier, but it's fine. And especially <clears throat> once I use it, 
uh, for a little bit. I'm sure it'll be even easier to open up. Okay. Oh, I love, look at these backs. I hope the camera, I don't know if it's going to pick up just how beautiful this marbling is, but it's beautiful. Um, it's got this really nice matte. It's like a gray black um, edging, which is really nice. It's like a soft, you know, uh, which is perfect for these backs. Now, if you want to see size, it's it's probably about dead on standard tarot because this one might be a little bit bigger, um, but it's you know it's right around there. So, and it does come with a little guidebook. Yeah, so I definitely added on for the larger book, which I am going to read. <laughs> but, um, so, we have different spreads, which is interesting. And then it gets right into the cards. Um, so it, it does have a color, oh, it does have a color image of the card. I mean, it's small, but you can definitely tell what it is. Um, tells you, you know, what it is, but then it tells you who it is. And then it talks about, um, really the significance of the person, why they were picked. And then it talks about the card itself. Um, so we have about two paragraphs of that. Uh, so if you're looking, if you're the type of person looking for keywords, you're not going to find them here. But uh, for me, I don't, you know, I, I don't need them. You know, generally, for me, with, with keywords um, for tarot, there's usually not going to be a lot of big differences. I mean, there could be, I guess, but, you know, I personally would prefer, you know, the, uh, the information. And there's, there's Travis. So let's, let's get right into these cards. I'm dying to see them. Um, and if, if you're new here, um, <laughs> it might be worth mentioning that when I, when I back things at Kickstarter and, and, you know, sometimes just when I buy decks, just, I guess in general, when I buy decks often, I only look as long as I need to, to make a decision about a deck. So sometimes I, I spend a lot of time looking at it, reading about it, things like that. Other times I just take a glance and decide I want it. And once I do that, I stop, I just stop looking at it because I kind of want to be surprised. And so for this deck, um, that was the case. So let me pull you in a little bit. Um, so I, I just didn't look too hard because uh, I wanted the experience. Oh, and I should say, I guess this is a beautiful linen cardstock. I'm going to move you out just a teeny tiny bit. Yeah, so it's a really, really nice cardstock. So, and I'm not going to read, um, I don't know, do you want me to? So, it does have the number, and it has your, you know, your center, like the full. And then here, for the full, we have James Douglas, the third Marquis of Queensbury. Um, really, really interesting. Now, let's just to to kind of get an idea um let's go ahead and just read just the first little bit about this card um so james was the second son of the duke of queensbury but from his youth he was considered an imbecile his behavior was so bad he had to be restrained in the basement of holyrood palace in edinburgh in 1707, at the age of nine, he escaped from a cell and murdered a cook in the kitchen. He was discovered roasting the cook's body parts over an open fire and eating pieces of the meat. 
The Duke used this power to cover up the incident and had James locked away in an estate outside the city. Um, so I guess, let me, let me continue just so I guess you can fully understand how this deck is. The fool, the fool can indicate folly, mania, or extravagance, although it also stands for new beginnings. This card represents brash behavior, jumping without thinking, and the folly of violence. It also shows a person who knows what they want in life and then goes for it. Sometimes we are indecisive and wander through life without purpose. James Douglas knew from the start he wanted to be a cannibal killer. He didn't wait until he was old enough to pursue his dream. He also didn't wait for somebody to give him permission. James followed his instincts and listened to his heart to accomplish his goals early in life. Oh my god, that's hysterical. Okay, that's fabulous. So, um, we are, we are kind of hitting some of those maybe less pleasant aspects of the card, but he did also touch on some of the more pleasant ones that, you know, are more commonly, uh, attributed. But I think this is fabulous. So now, for the magician, we have Dr. Johann George Faust, um, which is fabulous. I mean, that's so perfect. High Priestess, we have Mary Laveau, the voodoo queen of New Orleans. And for the Empress, Countess Elizabeth Bathory de... Exit. And we have Nero for the Emperor. I mean, that's perfect. And, you know, I I imagine you can probably see um, you know, how this, this deck is, is leaning into some of the darker stuff. But, um, you know, there's two sides to every coin. And, uh... I, I mean, personally, I wouldn't... You know, say I pull... Say I pull Nero for something. I'm not going to automatically go to Nero himself. Um, but, you know, even Nero had positive traits. That's all I'm saying. But, um... Certainly, the, this card is leaning toward that um, maybe more extreme um, interpretation or or um, some of the um, less well-placed aspects. Um, and, and you could absolutely use it for that. Certainly, this could be a great shadow deck. But, um, I think for me, just, I mean, we're barely even getting in there, but I would definitely use it for anything. Um, that's just, so anyway, the Hierophant, we have the Grand Inquisitor, Tomas de Torquemada. And, and I'm going to stop reading them because... You probably don't need me to read. I think you can. I think you'll be able to make out um, who they are. And I'm definitely going to be mispronouncing a lot. Oh, except this. For the lovers, we have Vita and Juan Peron. Um, th this is one of my favorite musicals. And uh, I think that's perfect because there are so many choices that went along, you know, um, beyond that, just that lover's, oh, so we have a second lover's card, so we have Sergius and Bacchus, beautiful chariot, beautiful artwork, I love, oh, look at this, Wow, that's beautiful. I mean, it's just beautifully done. Now, the 
that's an interesting for strength because, um, you know, normally in the strength card, we see the beast, as it were, uh, tamed. And I really like this because you could take this so many different ways. Is this, is this that the beast has, has, um, <clears throat> like, is there not enough strength to tame him? Or is it because sometimes to unleash that beast, to let that, that part escape, it, it takes a certain amount of strength to do that sometimes too. I just, I think that's wonderful. There's so many ways you could read that. Oh, we have Edward Kelly for the Hermit. Oh, that's fabulous. John D for the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, and I am, I am stopping reading. The titles, wow, this is a beautiful deck. So it looks like for this card, <clears throat> so this is Gungo Lutet. Lutet? I, mm. <clears throat> it looks like this might hearken to an older, um, you know, when, when the hangman was more about, like, sacrifice, let's just say, so he was a guerrilla soldier who fought during the Congo War, raised as a slave, he won his freedom through his prowess at raiding villages and capturing slaves for his master. Once freed, Gongo became the leader of a gang, numbering thousands of soldiers. He initially fought against Belgian invaders but eventually joined them to fight against the Islamic slave traders. A Belgian commander accused Gongo of being a traitor, there you go, and ordered his execution. However, he wore a charm necklace, which prevented him from being killed and survived the first salvo of bullets. A shaman told them Gongo's secret and they removed the necklace, then fired a shot into his ear, killing him instantly. Wow. That's really interesting. Okay. Oh, for death, Jack the Ripper. It's fabulous. And then, uh, like, the birthmark, or the birthmark, the bookmark. We have Temperance, Angeline Tubbs, the Witch of Saratoga. That's beautiful. What a beautiful card. Ah, uh, the devil. Oh. oh, what a fabulous choice for that tower. H.H. H. Holmes' murder castle. And I think it ended up... I think it ended up... Uh, catching fire. I think... Wasn't that how it was discovered? I don't even remember. It's been so long. But, um... Queen Mary of England for the star. Mm. Uh, Rasputin for the moon. That's perfect. Mm. That's interesting. We have the Marquis de Sade for the sun. Yeah, I I can see it. That excess of, of that sun energy. You know, if every so often I'll hear people say, like, you know, how do you read the the sun if it's in that kind of ill position? Um, that's how you read it. <laughs> Not always, but yeah. The bloody benders. Oh, that sounds familiar, but I don't even know. I'm can't wait to read that book. Oh, Crowley for the world. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah, I know I'm going really slowly. Um, we'll speed up. Uh, 
These cards are beautiful. Oh, mesmer. <clears throat> so, in case you, in case you're not aware, I am a, a hypnotist, like a, a certified hypnotist. Um, and uh, yeah, studied mesmer. Um, he got he got a lot right. He got some things wrong, but he got a lot right to his credit. Um, Nicholas Flamel for the Six of Cups. How fabulous is that? That's interesting. We have Houdini for the Seven. Yeah. I can see that. I love that they're all holding cups. So we have a page, the night. Love Voisin. Voisin is poison, right? I think so. No. That's Poisson, right? Po oh, God, my French. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Super familiar. Don't know. Uh, Blackbeard for the King of Cups. Wow, look at this card. That's fabulous. Love that. And I love that, you know, some of these characters are completely unfamiliar to me. Like, I have no clue who this is. Anne Odelia Distabar? Didabar? I don't know. Um, not familiar at all. But then other ones are familiar, but I can't quite place them. And then others I know very well. Um, so I think that's a fabulous mix. Look at that. Look at her face. Oh god, the Donner Party for the Five of Pentacles. Well, I mean, that's perfect. Souls. I'm not sure who this is, but I feel like I heard about just from the picture, and I could absolutely be wrong. But there's a great podcast if you like uh, creepy stuff called um, Oh my God, what's it called? Um, True Ghost Story, I think. And I, I feel like she talked about this. But I could be wrong. Look at that. So we have McGregor Mathers for the Page of Pentacles. Hmm. Oh. Look at that for the Knight of Pentacles. Hmm. Oh. Oh, 
Oh wow. That is fabulous. Sir Thomas More. Here I'd say the decision has been made, right? <laughs> Ivan the Terrible. Johann Kelpius? Oh man, we have the Titanic for the Six of Swords. Wow. These are fabulous choices. I mean, some I don't know, but the ones that I do, oh my goodness. They're absolutely perfect. And I have a feeling that the ones that I don't know once I read about them, I'll say the same thing. You know what this would go wonderfully with is uh, my one of my favorites. Um, it's the the Madhouse Tarot. Wow. Bridget Bishop for the Ten of Swords. Chief Leather Lips. Look at that for the Knight of Swords. <laughs> yeah, Lizzie Borden for Queen of Swords. <sighs> Richard the Third for the King. the second the four of wands and I'll have to read about I mean I still don't I don't know Nostradamus for the six. I can see that. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's fabulous. Joan of Arc for the Knight of, of Wands. Stinking little mosquito thing. Um, that's fabulous for the Knight of Wands. Oh, look at that. Marianne the Norman for the Queen of Wands. Next, she's got the... That's fabulous. Ha! <laughs> And we have Vlad the Impaler for the King of Wands. Oh my goodness. I am super, super loving this deck. So much. So let's give it a shuffle. And then, um, how about I pull one more and we'll read, um, just because I think that the, I think that book is fabulous. I always still have to look at the big book. Um, 
think. Oh, these shuffle beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. Um, I think you might be able to still buy this. Um, from a site, I don't know for sure, but I I feel like you can. I hope you can, cause wow, what a great deck. Um, yeah, I am just really loving it already. I love the way it feels to shuffle. Love the way it feels in my hands. Love the backs. Um, all right, so let's just pick one. All right, just to kind of take a look at that one more card. This one. Okay, so we have Martin. Ocelot 1? Is that a 1? No, it must be an L. Oh my goodness. Ocelotl? Okay. So, and of course, that's the Knight of Cups. So. Let's see. Where are my cups? We have wands, we have swords, pentacles. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> okay. So, um, we have the, the title of the card. We have the name of the person. Um, and it says, Martin was a skilled Aztec sorcerer and businessman who predicted the arrival of the Spaniards to Montezuma II. He continued practicing divination and healing during the Spanish occupation and became extremely wealthy with numerous estates of his own. Martin was pressured to convert to Christianity and subsequently told to stop giving prophecies, which were considered to be a form of heresy. An inquisitor from Spain had him arrested and sentenced to exile. The ship he was on disappeared at sea and he was never seen from he was never heard from again it took the inquisition over a year to find and inventory martin's vast fortune in property and gold the knight of cups represents a proposition or an invitation it can indicate a friend or ally but the negative aspect of this card suggests exaggerations lies or secrets Martin Ocelotl was a peaceful healer who built a huge business empire from his work. His prophecies were revered by the Aztec noble class and the Spanish alike. So that's fabulous. So, um, let me, let me lay some out. So if you're like me, um, I like to kind of see how the cards sort of fit together um, so I can kind of get a feel for how I might read with them right because everybody reads differently and um, it can help now I'll probably pull this lover's card out um, at least when I read for myself because I it's not gonna compare with with Ava not for me um, But it's a beautiful card. Sometimes I leave duplicates in. It just depends. But I don't really feel like I need two lovers cards. But I may kind of keep it um, if I end up using this deck. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna keep it. I'm not gonna throw it out. Um, but you know, I may keep it with the deck so that if I read for someone else and I feel like that's a better card for them, um, I can just make a quick swap. Oh, I think this is just beautiful. Um, and even without knowing all of the stories, although I'm so excited to read about them and, and, and really explore, and I'm going to start reading tonight, um, 
So, and you guys know I don't, <laughs> I don't tend to use guidebooks too often, although I am working on changing that. Um, but, you know, this book, this book, let's take a quick look. Um, this, I think, is just going to be fascinating. So, it looks like we have roughly... Um, anywhere from two pages to like five, two to six, um, depending on the person. So... So like Martin, right? We just read about him in the little book. We've got a good bit more. Um, love that this was included too. So, you know, it's it's going to depend on the person, but I love this extra information about them, and I'll definitely be reading this and and really enjoying it. I think this is going to be fabulous. Um, so, if you're interested in this deck and you're not sure if you want to add the book, um, I did. <laughs> I would. Um, so, for each of the cards, it looks like you've got at least two pages. Um, sometimes significantly more than that. Like Rasputin. I mean... Oh, look at that. That's... Fabulous. So we have fabulous pictures beyond just, you know, the cards. Not, and I don't mean just like just, but you know. Um, you know, we have a fair amount about Crowley. So, yeah. Oh, I think this is fabulous. There is, I think, a hardcover version of this too, which maybe I should have gotten, but that's okay. Um, so, anyway, oh, do you want to see it? You want to see it with the Mad Men? Or the Madhouse? Because I just feel like... There's something about the artwork, too. Alright, one sec. Okay, sorry. I was, like, tripping over wires. Um, I just feel like... These will be so nice together. So this is the Madhouse Tarot, and it's by Eugene Vinitsky and Elsa Kapatnikovsky. Kapatnikovsky. And, uh, oh, this is one of my favorite decks. I love this so much. Um, so those are the back, so if you want to kind of see. But watch how... Watch how the fronts look together. So just to give you an idea. <clears throat> because I think it'll be super fabulous. Now, this is tarot with tarot, um, which is something that I do a good deal of. Um, you know, I, I have so many decks. And uh, I really, is that getting a glare? Dang it. You know what, let's, let's move it over. Um, there, I feel like that's better. Um, I have so many tarot decks. Um, so I really enjoy, you know, being able to use more... Look at that. Wow. Enjoy being able to use more than one deck at a time. Um... Oh, I think these are fabulous together. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, I love this deck so much. Let me know what you think. Oh, let me know what you think. And uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And hit that bell. Um... And that way you get alerted when I post new videos. And, uh, <clears throat> I'm actually going to have, I have more, more exciting mail. And I have to do part two 
of my Halloween decks. Um, I, I feel like maybe I need to briefly talk about both of these decks because I think they'll both be fabulous for Halloween time, even though they're not, you know, Halloween exactly. But, um, oh yeah, these are fabulous. So, um, yeah, but, but let me know your thoughts. Do you have this deck? Did you, did you get it? Are you waiting for it? Um, are you excited to use it? Oh, and there are so many fabulous ways we could use this. Oh, I am just really, really loving it. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> I could do this all night, and I might. But um, I won't keep you any longer. So until next time, just be wonderful to yourself. Be really, really wonderful because you deserve the best, only the best, all the best. And that is my wish for you.